Okay, so looking at a radius and ulna, again, we have an anterior view here of the right radius and ulna. Starting with the radius, at the proximal end, you can see this rounded bit, that's the head. So that's the head of the radius, so proximal end up here. Just inferior or distal to the head, we have the neck, the thinner part, and then we have the radial tuberosity, where the biceps brachii muscle attaches. So head, neck, radial tuberosity. So they're all close to the proximal end. If we come down to the distal end then, we have this large process that protrudes here on the lateral surface. That's the styloid process of the radius. And on the medial aspect of the distal end, we have the ulna notch. So the head of the ulna is going to articulate there with that notch. So the styloid process on the lateral aspect of the distal end, the ulna notch on the medial aspect. Now then with the ulna, again there's a few features that are close together on the proximal end. We have the olecranon here. Then we have the trochlear notch. So this notch here is the trochlear notch that wraps around the trochlea of the humerus. Then this bump here is the coronoid process. So it just goes olecranon, trochlear notch, and then coronoid process. And then just inferior to the coronoid process is the tuberosity of the ulna, where the brachialis muscle attaches. So four features there, all pretty close together. Now then down the distal end, we have a head, which again is a rounded articular prominence, and like the radius, there's a styloid process that's quite obvious here on the ulna. Now that one will be on the medial aspect of the distal ulna.